everyone, I'm Dr. Prince Prasilla, endodontist, and I welcome you all to my channel, Dental Treasures. Did you know that electricity plays a very important role in our clinical practice? You must be wondering why I'm talking about electricity when we have other issues like clinical management or complications of root canal extraction, etc. So let me share a real life story of a dentist whose work has come to a standstill because of a faulty electrical system. Now, as a dentist, we have to deal with highly specialized equipments which is expensive, such as dental chairs, compressor, x-ray units, and so on. So one of my colleagues have invested around 1.5 lakh rupees for x-ray units and B-class autoclave. And due to the electrical malfunctioning, her both their equipments stopped abruptly. So this is why the electrical management is very, very important. Due to frequent voltage fluctuations, she has to lose both her equipments and ultimately she has to suffer a 1.5 lakh rupees of loss of equipments. So to prevent this equipment damage, so let us dig deep into the problem and find out a sustainable and a practical solution. Today I have Dr. Harish, Chief Dental Surgeon at Dental Concerns, Kardaspura. Dr. Harish is highly experienced dental practitioner. I'm sure his experience and expertise will surely find a solution for our practical problem. Welcome to my show, Dr. Harish. Firstly, thank you so much for accepting my invitation and uh, taking your precious time to share an insight with us. I'm sure your experience will definitely add a significant value to our aspiring young dentist. Thank you so much Dr. Prince for inviting me for this episode. Yes, uh, definitely we'll go ahead and talk about the power supplies and uh, what basically is required to set up a single chair dental clinic. A pleasure to have you with us doctor. So let us begin our discussion today. Uh, so my first question, Dr. Harish, mm -hmm. uh, why do you think uh, power supply is important? Yes, uh, that, that's actually a very nice question, uh, Dr. Prince. See, uh, if you want to set up a basic single chair dental clinic, first thing you will have to notice is the power given to your clinic or to your premises. Uh, that includes how many kilowatts do you require to run a successful dental clinic with one chair one compressor, one micro, uh, one uh, autoclave, as well as uh, uh, approximately 30, 25 to 30 lighting and uh, AC. So you basically would require somewhere around 3.5 to 4 kilowatts of power. Uh, but Harish, like if someone already have chosen the location, mm. so if they want to increase the power load, mm. what should they do? So for example, you are hiring a place uh, where you want to set up a dental clinic and uh, you should make sure that you have a right power supply for approximately like you are hiring a place where it is uh, 300 to 400 square feet so to have a right power supply for a dental office or a dental clinic it would require uh, somewhere in between 3.5 to 4 kilowatts so if the power or the power which has been provided from your uh, from the owner or the premises is shorter, you just need to go ahead and apply for a uh, extra additional power. Uh, that you'll have to go ahead and apply it from a yes. electric board uh, office. So that would be taken care of by a professional electric uh, electrician, where you would go ahead and uh, apply an additional power or additional load for uh, from your premises. Do you think we have to connect our stabilizer for the entire equipment? Single chair uh, dental clinic, you definitely need a stabilizer. Apart from that, you should also make sure that you are right earthing on a grounding tank to your premises. That that should be taken care of by a electrician, a professional electrician who could go ahead and fix that issue. Once that is done, then a stabilizer is a must for a dental clinic so that you could take care of your dental chair which is expensive it, it could also take care of your uh, uh, compressor as well as your uh, uh, your sterilization everything so it is a must uh, that you use a stabilizer so you mentioned about earthing and grounding so what is the difference between these two and why is it important 
Well, uh, earthing and grounding is uh, two different concepts where uh, earthing is done to protect human beings from uh, shock, a shocking process. And the grounding is done to protect the entire uh, unit, your dental chair, your, uh, your compressor and any other electric thing, it is done for that, grounding is done for that. Apart from that, you should also make sure that you, you, you should have a ELCB. ELCB is an earth leakage circuit breaker, something like a DP, where any output is more than excess, it will trip. So, your equipments are safer from that. So make sure that you have that uh, ELCB in your setup. Which company do you suggest for a stabilizer and what would be the cost? Yeah, approximately I am using a servo stabilizer for my chair, the compressor as well. So it's somewhere in between like uh, 8 to 12 grams, which you could definitely uh, afford it. So that's a must for a dental clinic. How much of uh, power supply is required for the primary devices? See, to, uh, to run a single uh, dental chair, uh, uh, you, you approximately need uh, 1000 to 1100 kilowatts for your dental chair. And uh, this autoclave is again uh, 600 to 800, where it would just pick up a more load. And they do come around the 800 kilowatts. And of course, it depends on the compressor. You, are you using uh, like 1 liter compressor or 0 0.5, 0 0.75? Again, it depends like how much uh, that would require. Approximately, I, I am using 1.5 uh, compressor, HP uh, compressor. So I would definitely tell it would uh, require another 1000 kilowatts. So it would only, the startup would be more. And as it starts, the power consumption should come down to 800 or probably within 1000 kilowatts. So, to run an overall single chair dental cleavage, you would definitely require uh, 4 kilowatts uh, without AC. If you uh, require an AC, again another 1, uh, one kilowatts, like approximately 5 kilowatts for uh, AC, dental chair, compressor, your clave, all this. Approximately your safer side with 5 kilowatts. That is one of the most uh, uncomplicated uh, explanations. Uh, also, Doctor, uh, in case there is a heavy rain or thunderstorms or during the monsoon time, uh, do you think the stabilizers will take care of our equipments? Yeah, see, uh, apart from stabilizer, we should make sure that uh, your earthing and grounding is done properly from a professional electrician. So along with that, if you are using a uh, stabilizer, definitely I'm um, sure that uh, your equipment are safe now. Uh, doctor, when it comes to power failures, so what kind of backup do you suggest in a clinic? You see, uh, there are two kinds of uh, backup where uh, you could definitely go and opt for, which I really suggest would be the Jensen, the first thing, but it has been classified as two. The first thing would be the battery backup, that's a UPS one. To run a single uh, dental chair, you definitely need uh, uh, three 150 uh, mAh uh, batteries where it would, you'll have to shell out somewhere around uh, uh, 35 to 40 grams uh, for a, a battery and a backup. Instead, I would suggest you to go for a, a genset yes. where you would only be shelling out uh, only the fuel. Uh, only the fuel, uh, that's only probably for a hour, hour or two. Uh, yes, I would definitely go ahead and opt for a, a gen set instead of a battery backup. But uh, most of the clinics they use UPS. Yeah, you could definitely go ahead and use both. Mm -hmm. See, uh, if you only, only want to run, uh, you don't run a, uh, a dental chair always. When there is no patients, you could definitely go ahead and uh, uh, use the UPS part and when there is a patient where you need to do a crown cutting or axe opening or anything like that, definitely you could go out and use a, uh, a genset. So what about in uh, remote places or villages where there will be like uh, power cuts which is frequent like for 8 hours, 6 hours? And I would definitely suggest genset, a generator uh, for a rural area so that uh, there is no interruption in between your work. Suddenly what happens if there is only a uh, a UPS could only have a lighting and your chair could uh, manageably run but not your compressor. So to run your compressor, your lighting, uh, your to clave and things, it is better you always go for a chance both. both. Or even both, mm -hmm. yes definitely. Uh, doctor, what about the maintenance part? Like uh, 
for a UPS any maintenance is required? Yes, so UPS definitely you need to guard and uh, put a distal water every now and then as per the probably uh, probably like a uh, monthly one or probably uh, 45 days one you will have to keep on monitoring the uh, battery is that uh, is that distal water power has been reduced so you will have to keep on pulling that and yes genocide also has gotten uh, maintenance once you will have to call on a technician to check whether uh, uh, does it uh, require oil change or does it require uh, any service or these things? Yes, both as well as maintenance. That's yes, true. So, what do you think the life of a UPS? The UPS would uh, hardly be there for 42 months, what the company gives. And general yes, definitely, depending upon the usage, uh, it would give you a longer life than the uh, UPS, the battery man. So I would suggest go for a uh, genset instead of going for a uh, UPS because it's has a fixed uh, timing so around 36 to 42 months. After that again you'll have to shell out uh, your money, you have the money to buy uh, batteries. Yeah, and you, can just, yeah, you have to replace the battery. Yeah, you will have to uh, replace the whole set. It is not that you could just replace one uh, battery uh, or one uh, unit of it. You'll have to go for a complete replacement. Suppose you are having a 150H or 3, you have to go for a complete 3, uh, uh, you have to go for a complete uh, 3 batteries uh, exchange or uh, replace. But in uh, uh, Genset, you will have to only uh, maintain the, uh, the fuel, yes, of course, and the maintenance. It's the only thing which you're going to bear. So I rather suggest one time investment would be uh, much, much better uh, to run a thing. Uh, that message is very very important so as doctor said it's better to invest in our generators because every five years you have to replace the battery completely and again you have to shell out the money so the better doctor suggests is to go for a generators since uh, most of the clinics they use batteries uh, so is there any dedicated space for the battery to be stored can they keep it in the a working area because when I go to different clinics I see batteries which is kept near the patients so do you think it's uh, safe uh, the battery should be kept in a, in a place where it is not exposed to the patient or it should be kept in a place where it is uh, free enough. Like you should find a, a premises where you can store your batteries, uh, preferably away from the patient working area. Away from the patient working area. That would be the right suggestion. Nonsense. Yes, if there is no space uh, up till date, as per my, my knowledge, I haven't heard anything like that. Yes, just because of the battery, this happened, that happened. Yes, then to, to be on a safer part, it is good to have a battery placed in a place where the patient is not there. Like it, it should be away from the uh, patient working area. That's what I suggest. Okay. So, because I see batteries kept in a closed cupboard. That it should always be a ventilated place where uh, there is a lot of uh, input of air and output of air, where there is ventilation. It should be exposed. There is no heat generated and things like that. Yes. Definitely safety comes first, so always store your batteries away from the working area, especially when there is a ventilation, all those things should be provided with the cupboard. Suppose the batteries are unused for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, do you think there will be any uh, variations in the electricity bill? See, uh, suppose it is like uh, you charge your mobile phone and you don't receive a call or you don't use your phone, but definitely your battery comes down. It is the same way. Uh, UPS works. You use it or you don't use it. Definitely that input will be there and also there's an exit. So yes, it would definitely increase uh, your current bill or your current uh, uh, consumption a little bit. Yes, that is like exemption. That is of course an exemption. So I hope you got uh, what exactly I'm trying to communicate. So if you have a UPS battery where you're not going to use it every day, but still it consumes power. So your electricity bill would definitely increase once you start using the UPS system. Yes. Uh, so what do you think your average your electricity bill would be? Approximately to run a to run a single dental chair, I would shell out somewhere around 1,600 to 1,750 uh, with single AC and approximately 30 to 40 lighting. And uh, yes, again it depends on how much you work, how much patience you get, how much you go with that. But average, you could just take it somewhere in between 1600 to 1700 
I would suggest that would be the average uh, electricity bill. Also, doctor, do you have uh, any message for the viewers, especially the young aspiring dentists who would like to open a new clinical setup? Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, I would suggest uh, any dentist or any upcoming dentist to open a new clinic who's going to set up a new things. I would suggest please, please go for a stabilizer because the equipment what we use are expensive. Without a stabilizer, definitely when there's something with a power, when there's a power uh, high voltage coming in, then you're going to definitely you'd have to shut up a lot of money to go ahead and fix your instruments. Instead, just invest in your stabilizer, which would definitely take care of your entire uh, unit, your chair, your compressor, your uh, stabilization unit, everything. So I would uh, rather suggest you to go for a stabilizer. That's the message today. So with this, we'll wrap up today's session. Dr. Harish has shared his deep insight knowledge and I'm sure this can be clinically applicable and which will help a lot of young aspirants to open their clinical venture. I thank Dr. Harish once again for sharing his precious time with us. Thank you so much Dr. Harish. So thank you so much for sharing your insight knowledge and uh, spending your precious time with us and I'm sure this will be inspiring for the aspiring dentist. And, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Once again. Thank you so much, Dr. Prince, for uh, inviting me for this episode. Yes, uh, I hope this will go well. Thank you so much for the viewers. If you like this video, do like, subscribe, and share it among your friends so that you can learn A to Z of the dental world. Thank you so much, viewers. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.